Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the very first podcast from Gloucestershire Hospital's um, apprenticeships team. Um, hope you're all doing well out there. So as we are, or hopefully when you listen to this, it might not be, but it's National Apprenticeship Week coming up in February. So we're going to be talking today everything apprenticeship wise. So I'm lucky to have some really special guests with me today. I've got um, one of my longstanding colleagues, Becky Henderson here today. And I'm also luckily joined by two apprentices, both from different areas from our trust and also from a a clinical and non-clinical background. So let's kick off straight away with um, some apprenticeship information that you all out there might be really interested to to know about. So Becky, thanks for coming today. Hello. Hi, (laughs) hi there. So can you tell me a little bit about the apprenticeships um, we're currently offering at Gloucestershire Hospitals? What types there are out there? What kind of things are out there? Because I think a lot of people might I think they're all about nurses and doctors, but but what is the reality of it? Yeah, so we've got about 350 apprentices within our organisation at the moment, wow. um, and they're on a range of different apprenticeships, um, both for clinical and non-clinical staff. So as Lisa was saying, it's not just nursing, but we do offer the healthcare support worker apprenticeship as an entry route in. Um, But we also have things like healthcare science, leadership and management, and that's from team leader, supervisor, all the way up to senior leader. Um, We also have some apprenticeships within our GMS function, so that's Gloucester Managed Services. So they um, oversee our estates and facilities. Um, So we've got things like property maintenance, electrical, um, engineering previously we've had within our medical engineering department um, and also finance and they range from level two which is GCSE equivalent all the way up to level seven which is master's level. Gosh that's a real range of opportunities isn't it? So um, obviously the NHS has over like 350 careers I think it is Um, so a real real wide range probably something that you wouldn't necessarily think about going into like estates and facilities like the cooking the chefs have we got anybody in that kind of area at the moment we have got somebody on the production chef as well which is a level two entry apprenticeship with one of our local providers great okay and what sort of ages are these apprentices that are coming into our organization are they all kind of school leaver age or um it's a bit of a mix to be honest so 16 plus um i think we've got apprentices currently within their 50s as well so you're never too old to learn um so yeah a real mix and that is as lisa said recruited in from school but also for existing staff we like to upskill and give people um the opportunity to to further develop within their areas. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I know we have got some really good success stories, haven't we, about people who have started on an apprenticeship and really gone on and developed. And and I understand the retention rate's really good and really high for apprentices that start off in our organisation. Yes, it is. Yeah, they they tend to go on and do bigger and better things, but they they do stay here because this is where they've done their training. That's that's fabulous. Brilliant. Okay. And um, some apprentices, I know there's going to be, um, I'm going to be doing another podcast later this week about parents, influences, parents and carers. And it's um, nice to see, I, I see some apprentices around that have parents or relatives that work here. So if they're recommending their um, their child or, or person to come and work here or become on an apprenticeship, that's that's really fantastic, isn't it? It is, yeah. Great. Great. Okay, so I'm going to move over now to to Keely and Dan. Thanks both for coming. No um, it's really great to see you and hear you today. So, Keely, would you just like to introduce yourself and tell us what apprenticeship you're undertaking? Hi, I'm Keely, and I am an apprentice therapy support worker. I work on the acute medical unit. Um, this apprenticeship has been amazing. I'm coming to the end of my apprenticeship now, but I have very big ambitions to undertake another apprenticeship to do physiotherapy um, because that's always been kind of where I want to be. Great okay so when you say you've got those future ambitions to do physiotherapy as as a degree apprenticeship through ourselves? Yeah I, yeah. I think university isn't for everybody and the apprenticeship route is definitely something that I would be looking into. So did you know about that apprenticeship before you came here or is it something you found out about whilst you were here, that degree apprenticeship? It's something that I found out while I was here. So I didn't know that there were apprenticeships in therapy before I started and now there's been so many opportunities to learn about different apprenticeships and I think that's the route that I want to go. Great. And being an apprentice, I think some people wonder how much kind of hands-on work and things you'll be doing or how involved are you with with the patients? Yeah, so at the start it was a bit 
kind of shadowing for about a month but after that you, you're so hands-on and you get to make great relationship with one your colleagues and two the patients they just love to see you and especially when you're on your own you get to make special bonds with patients and with therapy you get to rehab patients and the joy on their face you get to see is just amazing. That sounds great. That sounds so inspiring. And do you feel part of the team? You know, you are an apprentice. There's obviously lots of other experienced people that work within the physiotherapy team and the acute medical team, the doctors, nurses, healthcare assistants, pharmacists, all these other people that you interact with. Do you feel part of the team? I think, yeah, definitely. Because I think as an apprentice, people look up to you as well. And they see how much work you actually do on the unit and... They, the doctors especially look up to you and will listen to you. Yeah, you're really at that forefront of patient care, aren't you? Yeah, and your views get valued so much and that's what makes you feel like part of the team because you, you get listened to. Brilliant. And how have you managed working and kind of learning at the same time? Obviously, the money must be nice to have some money instead of being at college or whatever. But, you know, learning whilst you're earning, what, what do you think around that kind of statement? I think it's a really nice balance between the learn and the work. We get time out of the wards to complete our learning and that's our time to just do what we need to. And the balance is great because you learn something and then you can just put it into practice straight away. Mm, And for people who learn visually, that is the best way to learn Mm. because you can learn it, but as soon as you put it into practice, that stays in your brain. Yeah, and it, you it, can relate to it, I yeah, suppose, exactly. can't you? Yeah. yeah, and it does. I think it does stick for a lot of people that way. Great, thanks. Thanks, Kelly. I'm just going to move on to Dan now. So, Dan, would you like to introduce yourself? Because you're in slightly uh, a different role. You're in a non-clinical role, um, aren't you? Yeah, so uh, I actually work myself as well in the Apprenticeships and Careers team. Um, so my role is the Customer Service Practitioner Apprenticeship. So that apprenticeship is not entirely what you think on on the, on the face of it because while it also does involve customer service in terms of um, answering inquiries answering emails it's also in my role um, I have some broader sort of project work that I do for example on our social media feed um, and also I produce a newsletter which goes out every week in term time and that is very useful for people to find out about apprenticeships and careers opportunities in our area in the um, in the NHS, both in our trust and in the uh, sister Gloucestershire Health and Care Trust. So it's a very good way to find out about the broad range of opportunities available. So I see my, my role um, not just as um, customer service in terms of um, talking to people, di- dealing with people directly, but also um, helping to create some um, engagement with people in the local area. So I find it a very gratifying role because I feel like I have um, a big role to play in terms of um, the administration and the team, but also with engaging people and being able to um, foster interest in apprenticeships in our trust. Great. Thanks, Dan. And how did you find out about this opportunity? Um, so I was obviously looking for apprenticeships quite broadly. Um, I had an account on the um, the government website where you can see all the apprenticeship opportunities in a local area. And this was one that came up on that site. And I was um, I thought it sounded really interesting because it was actually within the apprenticeships department. Um, and obviously from reading the job description and reading the person specification, I realized that this was, it seemed like quite a good way to um, sort of kickstart a career. And that's kind of how I see it. It's a good way to kickstart a career. And then I can move on to further um, further horizons having completed the apprenticeship. And what's your future ambition? Keely mentioned hers about the physiotherapy route. What's What's yours? Um, so I would say I'm um, trying to keep my options open and because obviously um, there's so many different career opportunities, so many different departments and it's only I think when you get into the NHS you realise how broad it is and there are departments, areas you, you simply wouldn't know until you get into the NHS to um, you know, just think about all the departments in this building. There's, there's, a, there's a wider education service, there's things like recruitment, there's things like um, other HR areas, so it's so broad. And now that I'm in the NHS, I'm thinking about how I can perhaps work my way up a bit, but also um, consider different opportunities and consider there are different routes I could go down. Great. Thank you, Dan. And I understand that Becky, who's on on the call today, um, she's your mentor, isn't she? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So all apprentices, I understand, coming back to you, Becky, do get allocated a mentor. And how does that mentoring work within our organisation? 
Yeah, so our, our mentors play a valuable um, sort of source of information, I suppose, for our apprentices. Um, and we run an effective mentoring session um, within our team. So it's it's a morning or afternoon session for new mentors to apprentices um, where we cover things like myth busting, um, information about the chosen standard that their apprentice is on, off the job time, um, areas for development. We also, um, when we do the mentoring session, we talk about what development there is for mentors as well, such as the leadership and management apprenticeships that I uh, mentioned previously. Um, So they are a valuable source of information and we try and equip them prior to their apprentice starting so that they've got that knowledge behind them before their apprentice joins their team so that they can have a successful journey within our organisation. Wow, that sounds amazing. So... Those existing staff that you choose, um, I know some of them are, are previously apprentices that have done the apprenticeship themselves. So that is really quite probably powerful that they've been in that position and now they can mentor the next lot of apprentices coming through. I, I suspect that makes them feel really good. Yeah, and a lot of them actually volunteer to be mentors because wow. they've obviously had that exposure themselves from the other side. So. It's yeah, good for them. puts them in a good good position to, to really understand, I suppose, doesn't it? Yeah. Great. So that workshop is is quite quite popular, I suspect. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and we do it. We try to do it every other month if we can. Yeah. Um, and we're always advertising it on our notice boards and, and on our social media feeds. So if anybody's interested, they can contact us and book on. Brilliant. OK. Um, I just wanted to quickly mention today um, about T-Levels. I don't know if anybody out there knows about T-Levels. T-Levels is a, um, a qualification that's equivalent to three A-Levels and holds UCAS points. And I understand we support T-Level students as well in this organisation, Becky, and you've been quite involved in that. We do, yes. Yeah. So at the moment, we're supporting T-Level students on the health um T level, and that is with two of our local colleges. Um, this year, we're hosting twenty five students across our ward areas within Gloucestershire, uh, Gloucestershire Royal, and Cheltenham General, um, and that's grown from seven in the first year. This is our third year now. Um, and we're trying new things each time. We're always looking for new opportunities and new areas to get on board because it's just going to grow. Brilliant. Um, we're also exploring T-levels within our science areas as well. So we have a pilot happening in one of our labs, and that's going to be starting um, in January this year. Um, and we're also looking at exploring business admin areas and also IT as well. That's amazing. Sounds really, really a lot of work, a lot of exposure to the different careers available within the NHS, which Keely and Dan have also mentioned that they probably wouldn't have known about those areas. So those T-level students that are from health are going to get a really good, hopefully, experience to see what different roles there are within that that multidisciplinary team as well and how how other um, functions support that, the estates and facilities, the porters, um, the domestics and how they are really all integral to, to a team. I, I feel um, working here um, and being part of this organisation, it, it is a big team and, and you are all supported um, and I think that that's come through today which is really great to hear I'm just going to come back to you Dan because you um, as the apprentice within our team look after our tr- Twitter and Instagram account um, so I just wanted to make sure people today are aware of what kind of things do we post on there and what information can they find out and then we can tell them about the um, the handles and and where they can find that information out if they want to join us on our Twitter and Instagram journey. Okay, so um, the social media, the, the, the Twitter and Instagram that we have, they are um, very much intended to be promoting and signposting and supporting. So I understand on the newsletter we have a lot of, um, we publicise a lot about our events that are coming up and careers events we've been to as well and, and tips about, about job opportunities coming up as well and things like that. Um, yes, yeah, so the news there c- contains um, similar content as well, but it also can- contains promotions for, and social media will have this as well. Um, for, for instance, we've got a healthcare science event coming up. Yeah. Um, so this will have information about all these different specialisms. Um, and this, uh, the news there is also useful to promote, pr- promote that as well. And it can give wider information, more specific information about the different careers in healthcare science. So our Twitter handle is gh underscore apprentices. 
And I believe our Instagram one is GHFT underscore apprenticeships. That's right, yeah. Is that right? Have I got that one right? That's right, yeah. (laughs) Brilliant. Thanks, Dan. Um, And yeah, you mentioned about the healthcare science event, which we've got coming up in March. So if anybody is interested in any careers within healthcare science, we have got an amazing event coming up at the University of Gloucestershire. And we're really um, excited this year to be able to have a colleague with us who's going to be undertaking a VR experience for anyone to come along to 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 do that so um if anyone's interested please contact us um we can be contacted on 0300 422 5176 or drop us an email um i suppose i just want to kind of round off now and and probably just have a personal reflection about um everyone's journey really how how would you sum it up so far so perhaps keely how or dan do you want to go first and see how the whole experience has been has it been <clears throat> without putting words in your mouth enjoyable hard work be be real about it we, we know it's all not singing and dancing and roses because obviously the nhs is um you know has got its challenges at the moment but it is a most rewarding place to work so i think it's been amazing the amount of support that i've been given from my team and the apprenticeship team and our training provider as well um it is also challenging in a way that you are learning so much and sometimes you do connect with a patient too much and that can sometimes when they go off it's like wow i've done so much but is that enough sometimes okay so to sum up probably really supportive but can be overwhelming which I think is a really fair fair description so summing it up for you Dan um so I think for me the apprenticeship has done for me what it um intends to do it's um given me lots of learning opportunities it's helped me progress my career um and it's given me a good stepping stone into a career and I I feel that it's been a very good way to um uh to to have a co- good combination of learning and working. So it, it's done what, what I came in for it to do, yeah. So it's kind of a great, opp- it's been an opportunity and it's been one that's given you food for thought to, to progress. Definitely, yeah. 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 Okay, and Becky, just lastly, perhaps from you as well, what do you enjoy most about working alongside apprentices? Um, I think it's the amount of people, to be honest, um, that I get to meet and, and sort of see, develop and grow. So, you know, we've got a really good team here. We work really well and closely together, but it's also um, supporting the next generation, I suppose, of of our leaders, essentially, for the new recruits coming in. Mm. Um, and we've seen that. I've been in the team for about 15 years this year in different roles. Um, so it, I've seen You people. must like it then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do, yeah. Um, it's very varied. It keeps me on my toes, which is good. Um, but I get to see people come in um, in the beginning of their journey, like Keely and Dan, and where they sort of end up in the end. I've seen a full cycle for quite a few apprentices that have started here, gone on to develop, and they've come back. So it's great. Yeah. <clears throat> and I know they pop into the office from time to time, or we see them out and about, isn't it? And it is great to see how they've really developed and and gone further with their career hasn't it so um so that is lovely to see guys thank you so much for for being part of this very first podcast i hope we can um carry carry that forward and and have some more further further podcasts so thank you very much um it just leaves me to say if you are obviously interested please follow us on twitter follow us on instagram i have told you our telephone number and um if you look on the gloucestershire hospitals website under work for us then you will have all our further details on there with regards apprenticeships work experience or careers um there is going to be another podcast um launched later this week where I will be talking to um, two of my colleagues Josh and Sarah and Josh is the son of Sarah who Sarah works for our organisation as Josh's mum but she's in the nursery department and she hosts apprentices herself so we're going to have a lovely conversation Um, I am going to have a lovely conversation with them later this week to um, see it from a parent's perspective so any parents carers out there that really want to know um, what it's like they will be very honest and open about it so hopefully you can join us for that one And I also am looking forward to welcoming um, another apprentice later in the week, um, uh, 
an apprentice that's been in the care um, system um, that has undertaken an apprenticeship and has continued her journey with us. So a really nice story from Ella, one of our apprentices that came through the care system, and she's very honest and open about her journey. So thank you very much, everybody.